Hi again everyone, welcome to a video after the Asian Film Marathon and we have another collection update and this is the first one I've done in at least 6 or 7 weeks and I'm, the pile is the, probably the biggest I've ever done for a collection update I, I, I can't even lift it <sighs> Can I even get it in frame? That's it guys Okay, so we're gonna go through these, it's a lot of Masters of Cinema and other special editions and I'm sure you'll enjoy looking through these. So let's have a look. First, we'll start with Jesus, the Masters of Cinema releases, which you know I got some pretty damn good ones this time. Uh, the Burmese Harp, which I did a review on. Love this film, fantastic edition. The Naked Island, I wasn't too keen on by Kenito Shindo. He also done Only Baba. Good film, nevertheless, and also another good release. Kiraniko. Uh, by Shindo again. Good ghost story. Nice companion piece to Oni Baba. Very good release. Uh, I've got a Yasujiro Ozu film as well. It was released on Masters of Cinema, which I'm quite a fan of. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, it's one of his last films, and it's in colour. Beautiful colour. Uh, it's a good release also. And this is probably one of my favourite releases from Masters of Cinema. Uh, it's The Ballad of Narayama. It's not a very well known film, but it did win the Palme d'Or in 1983 Cannes. Um, this is a breathtaking film which I also did a review of and yeah this is a really beautiful film and that's the, the five massive cinema films that I bought and yeah let me know if you've seen these by the way and next up we'll have a look at just the standard blu-rays that I bought and there's so many of them again so we've got The Age of Innocence which I think is an American import um, but it's region free, which is nice. Uh, Age of Innocence is a Scorsese film that I haven't seen yet, so I look forward to that. Norte, The End of History. I picked this up in CEX for like three fifty or something, and you know it's pretty cheap because it's like six or seven pound online. Uh, this is a it's over four hours long. It's made in the Philippines, I think. I think it's a Fili Filipino film. But anyway, the, uh, I haven't heard too much about this one other than it's an absolute masterpiece. A 250 minute run time. If I actually find the time to watch this one. Let me know if you've seen that one. I would love to hear people's thoughts on it. Uh, another American import, uh, The Machinist. Uh, probably, while it's not the best film uh, Christian Bale's been in, it's certainly his best performance. Absolutely dedicated performance. You know, with the, not just with the weight loss, just how he embodies the character, he, you, know, you totally believe he is that character and yeah, fantastic film, American Import uh, there's some special features on here too so it's quite a quite a good release uh, I've got another two Ozu films but this time they're BFI releases we've got An Autumn Afternoon which is Ozu's final film which is also in colour and it's beautiful, you've got Tishu Ryu there again who appears in many of Ozu films uh, this is a really good release, so it is from BFI. Highly recommend buying this one. Then the other one is Late Spring, which also has one of his early films, The Only Son. Late Spring is a great film also. And good release, good print. <coughs> All Quiet on the Western Front, which is a Hollywood classic from 1930, very early signed film, which I've heard nothing but good things about. And it's one of those classics that I haven't seen yet and I probably should have because you know it's yeah, they got best, best picture in 1930 and it's one of the most revered you know classic Hollywood films so I would like to come out to see that one Saturday Night Fever I don't even know if I had this in the last video I done but Saturday Night Fever I bought and I look forward to watching this one because this is one of the iconic 70s films that I actually have not seen even though I've seen so damn many of them and I've had two or three different marathons looking at the 70s for some reason I never looked at this film and I don't know why but this is you know really iconic and I look forward to seeing this one I Wish which is a film from Hirozaki Kurida um, this is probably a very good film and I look forward to seeing this um, it's a coming of age kind of story I Wish uh, look forward to seeing that. Then we've got one from a director whose films that I still need to dig into, and it's uh, Takeshi Kitano. I have seen any of his films, Japanese director. Highly look forward to seeing his stuff because it looks very 
very visual, <clears throat> almost like a Quentin Tarantino of Japan. It always seems just looking at it. Um, but look forward to seeing this certainly. Then we also have some DVDs that I have. Uh, not too many. I think there's, there may be another few that I left out, but here's what I did remember to put in the video. The Poseidon Adventure. Um, there's, there's something about the name that I find very uh, camp and cartoonish about it. It, it, has, it. it sort of seems cartoonish, the Poseidon Adventure, but it's probably like a serious film. Um, <clears throat> So it's about a boat that goes upside down and everything and people are stuck on it. So I really look forward to seeing this because Gene Hackman's in it. And I love Gene Hackman. He's a great actor. Uh, another Curry Dada film. Still Walking. Great family melodrama. Uh, exploring all the characters' lives as they, you know, unite. Um, a wonderful film. Another Curry Dada film which is probably his best and most devastating. Nobody Knows. Which is based on a true story of this woman who abandoned her children and uh, the four children, one's 12 and the other's a bit younger and the 12 year old had to kind of, you know, almost play like a father figure to them and yeah, an astonishing film. Then a film from Masaki Kobayashi who directed The Human Condition and Harikiri. It's Samurai Rebellion which has Mifune. Gotta love it. Uh, the back, I like the back cover as well, showing you one of the great scenes in the film. But that was a great film as well, Summer Rebellion. Then the last, the last four films to show could be uh, the steelbooks that I have. And the first one being Interstellar, which actually isn't a steelbook, it's a diggy book. This cost me £20, but it's an abs absolutely wonderful release. You know, it's got the wee booklet in it and the special features, which I still haven't seen yet. But, um, you know, I look forward to seeing this film over and over again. I just the one I get to look at this beautiful cover every time. Yeah, very nice, very nice edition. Probably one of my favourites now that I own. Um, Zato Ichi, which is another Katano film, which I decided to buy, but I'm going to watch the original Katano, uh, the original Zato Ichi films because apparently there's, there, it's the longest running Japanese film series, and there's like 26 films or something, and that was fil like that was that's within 30 years, which is quite impressive. Because you think of James Bond, and they don't even have 30 films yet, and that's been around for 40, over 40 years. Uh, I look forward to seeing this one. If anyone's seen this, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Empire of the Sun, which has a really early Christian Bale performance. You can see him on the back there. Uh, I really look forward to seeing this one. Start with Spielberg. I, I just can't wait to see this one. John Malkovich is in it too. And yeah, I look forward to that one, definitely. And then the last one that I left, it's a film that I absolutely adore and it's one that I've owned on DVD and Blu-ray and I downloaded whenever I first ever saw it and it is One Flew Over the Cookie's Nest Steelbook. I just had to have it because it's just fucking beautiful. Just, look. just a beautiful release and it's embossed and everything and then you've got the, the back cover. Let me take off this. The back cover is beautiful. Probably one of my favourite steelbooks. You know, you've got him in chief, just fantastic. And the, in the inside is really cool too. Um, yeah, absolutely love this film, and I think I'll have to do a video on it because it's just an absolute masterpiece, and I've seen it four or five times, and it's just been it's got better every time. I think it's an astonishing film. I'm lost for words because it's a, it's just such a great film. Yeah, great release also, and that's everything that I picked up. Absolutely ridiculous amount, I can't even pick it up to show. Oh wait, I left one out. DVD, The Public Enemy. That's one I look forward to seeing. Um, it's a classic pre-code Hollywood film, um, James Cagney. But I, I can't believe I haven't seen this one yet. This is a very iconic gangster film. 1931, or yeah, 1931, James Cagney. Look forward to seeing that one. So, everybody, that is the, this is the pile, and the fact is, the sad thing is that not all of them have came yet, which is why they're not in the video, there's still another 7 or 8 films that will probably be in the next update, which I'll do in a month or so, but I'll see what happens. So yeah, that's the, that's the pile, which I can just about get in frame it seems, 
and I hope you enjoyed this update. I would love to hear your thoughts on the films and especially if you actually own the releases if you're in the UK or you know you've imported them or something. But yeah everyone thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I don't know what the next video is going to be so I can't tell you anything. See you next time everybody and thanks for watching.